My name is Ahad Azimuddin. I'm a medical student. But before I started medical school, I decided to go into business for a little while, start an MBA, and get into medical devices. And my friends and I, we started a medical device company, a, a small startup. And while we were going through this journey, uh, we noticed something peculiar. We saw that there are so many ideas everywhere, incredible ideas. You know, things that could save lives left and right, everywhere. But some ideas were incredible, they'd spread everywhere, everyone would want to invest. But other ideas, no matter how incredible they were, just flat. And nobody wanted any part of them. And I started to wonder why. Why is that? I want to uncover it. And I thought a little bit about it, and I looked at some, you know, I looked a little back into history, because I love history, and I think I found an answer. And we're going to explore that. Why does this innovation spread? So I'm a medical student. We're going to start with something near and dear to my heart, medicine. Uh, I know there's some people in medicine in the room. Uh, I'm going to talk about two extremely important innovations in the history of surgery, two of the arguably most important innovations in surgery. First one is anesthesia, putting patients to sleep, or more correctly termed, dissociating patients from pain. The next one is aseptic procedure keeping patients infection-free. Interestingly enough, both of them popped up about at the same time, around 200 years ago. And we're going to sort of explore the difference between the two and their trajectories into medicine. We'll start with anesthesia, putting patients to sleep. Does anyone know what the very first documented anesthetic was? Yeah, close, yeah, e alcohol. It was alcohol. You know, when the ancient Greeks would be fighting, you know, the Spartans and everything, they would say, hey, let's just get hammered to get rid of the pain. And that's exactly what they did. They'd got, they got hammered. And so, fast forward about 2,000 years, we meet this guy. His name is Dr. Henry Bigelow, and he puts two and two together. He said, let's take that same chemical that people get hammered on, and let me get my patients hammered before I operate on them. And it worked incredibly well. So in 1846, Dr. Bigelow and some of his associates, they published a paper called Insensibility Through Inhalation. And it spread like wildfire. It was everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And in an age without any Twitter, anything, it was across the entire world within a matter of years. Everyone was using anesthesia. People loved it. Incredible innovation, changed surgery forever. Now let's talk about the next one, aseptic procedure. Around the same exact time, we met this guy, Dr. Joseph Lister. Some of us may know him, his name, Listerine, you know. And he was a Scottish surgeon. He was taking a walk in a small Scottish town when he noticed, some, you know, he was, he was just thinking, you know, he's a surgeon. He's like, my patients are dying left and right. I'm operating on them. And, you know, they survived the operation, but they die from infection. You know, the, the rate is almost as if I didn't even operate on them. More were dying from infection from the procedure itself. How can I stop infections? And as he was taking that walk, thinking about that, he noticed some sewage cleaners. And they're using something called carbonic acid to clean sewer pipes. And like any sane person, he thought, let me put some sewage cleaner on my patients <laughs> after I operate on them. And the first person he tr one of the first people he tried this on was his sister on his dining room table. And so it worked amazingly. He put this carbolic acid in a jar with some alcohol. Didn't even really say what it was, but you know, he just started spraying that all over the place. You can see the pictures. He had a little spray bottle. He'd spray the whole room with it. And it worked. It brought down infection rates massively. Everyone was shocked. He brought down infection rates by about 80%, which was unheard of at the time. And you know how anesthesia spread across the world immediately? No one cared at all about this one. Here is a picture of surgery almost a century later, in around the 1920s. You'll notice not a single spray ball in sight. No one was using aseptic procedure, even though it could save so many people's lives. You'll notice all of the doctors are wearing black coats. The black coats, the reason they were black was to hide blood stains. They'd wear that same coat into every surgery, every operation. And it was even so that the more blood stains 
your coat was, the more battle-hardened of a surgeon you were, more experienced of a surgeon you are. And that's why we wear white coats now. So why is it that no one cared at all about Joseph Lister's life-saving innovation, but on the other side, Dr. Bigelow, his innovation was all of the rage? The answer is actually pretty simple. So while one made, both of them made surgery better, one made surgery easier, but another one made surgery harder. One, with anesthesia, you no longer had a kicking and screaming patient. Everything was much easier. It was much easier to operate on a patient when they weren't cursing Bloody Mary at you. But no one in their right minds wanted to spray sewer cleaner all over themselves before they started an operation. So that was a really simple idea behind these two innovations. And I think this says a very important thing about innovation. It's not good enough to make something better to innovate. You have to make it easier as well in order for it to really take off. Let's fast forward a couple years and we see Joseph Lister meet this guy, Dr. Robert Johnson. Now, a lot of us don't know his face. I'd be surprised if anyone really knew his face, but I'd be even more surprised if none of you have ever seen his name before. Almost all of us have seen his name before. Dr. Johnson, uh, he met Dr. Lister and said, hey, that's a really good idea, but it's a lot of hard work. Instead of having all the doctors spray everything, instead of adding an extra step to the procedure, how about we just take the tools and we just spray them beforehand and package them up, sterilize them, and we just sell them to doctors. That became this, which became this, and this started selling like hotcakes. Everyone wanted these new easy-to-use, sterilized tools. Demand was so high that Robert Johnson couldn't handle all of it himself. He needed his brother to help him out. So he got his brother, and they started a small little company. <laughs> and we see that innovation every single day in operating rooms around the world. And that is how innovation spreads. And let me take this to something, you know, a little bit closer to our time. Let's think of one of the more important innovators of our time. Um, who's someone nowadays in today's current atmosphere that we think of as an innovator who's really pushing technology, pushing startups forward? Elon yeah, Elon Musk is, is the, the easiest one. And when a lot of people think Elon Musk, we think what company? Tesla, Tesla. SpaceX. SpaceX. We think of super-powered electric cars incredibly complex, and we think of literally rocket science. Incredibly, incredibly complex things. And we get so wrapped up thinking about those complex things that we forget to think about how Elon Musk started in the first place. What was one of his first innovations? Do any of you guys know? It was, it was PayPal. PayPal was one of the first things he ever did. He took the idea of sending money to one another. Let's not just make it better but let's make it easier. Does anyone remember how hard it was to send money to a friend back in the 90s? Incredibly hard. It was almost impossible. Elon Musk took the idea and he said, let's make it easier. And that's why it spread. So I think that you know, says something about innovation today and a lot of things us innovators face. When we think of innovation, we think you know, rocket science. We think of incredibly complex items procedures, things that are complex, things about advancing science, advancing technology. But advancing technology is the wrong mindset to use. Instead of thinking about advancing technology, what about thinking about let's make technology simpler? Let's make it easier to use. Let's make it more accessible. And I think that is really how innovation spreads. And that's why some ideas take off and some ideas don't. The ones that take off are the things that make things not only better, but easier as well. And I hope we can take that all in to innovation in the future. Thank you.